The archaeology tour is the most highly recommended of the trips that we offer, combining as it does the opportunity to visit two or three of the most important archaeological sites, with also some views of the most scenic countryside around the area of Corinth. Here we're starting off from Varahati and driving due south in the direction of Nemea. You can see firstly the cultures of grapevines here, a lot of wine is produced in this area, and then also olive trees. And here as we're starting to climb to a slightly higher altitude around Sulinari, you can see also some conifers. And now here we've come out over the hilltops and we're on the road out to Nemea, where you can see again the vines, a lot of wine grapes cultivated here, and also table grapes as well. This trip is taking place at the beginning of May. You can see the sky is a little bit mixed there, rather cloudy, but blue trying to break through. Here we are just stopping at the edge of the wine roads into Nemea to have a look at the scenery and take some photos. Here you can see the map of the winelands, which is another of the trips that we do around this region if we're not going off to see the archaeological sites, the other option is just to visit some of the wineries and taste some of the wine. The grape harvest is in August going into September and generally each year's wine is available to drink from about November onwards. So at the moment here you can see there are grapes on the vine and just starting to ripen. At this time of year there's not too much work to be done in the fields and as this is a Sunday you don't see too many people out here working but you'll notice along the way we are passing the odd tractor and seeing a few people in the fields. And now here we are, about half an hour's drive from Verhati, arriving at the ancient site of Nemea. A small but very beautiful site, and here's the most important monument, the Temple of Zeus. Here in the ancient stadium we can see an athlete emerging from the competitor's tunnel out into the main stadium and warming up there and it looks as if she is ready to take part in a race. And here is another runner showing us the ancient style of running. Now having left Nemea, we're continuing across country, a little bit further south in the direction of Mycenae, which is about 20 minutes. Uh, you can see here some of the local produce on sale. At this time of year, we have citrus fruits and honey always, and of course, wine. And you can see here as the terrain starts to become a little more rugged towards the hills approaching Mycenae, fewer grapes and orange and lemon trees and here more olives. Here we are now arriving at Mycenae, one of the most spectacular and indeed one of the most ancient of the sites dating back to the late Bronze Age around 1600 to 1200 BC so about a thousand years older than the Acropolis of Athens and of course the House of Agamemnon is famous not just for the description of the expedition against Troy in Homer's Iliad but also for numerous of the ancient Greek tragedies and here we are approaching the Lion's Gate, the, the famous entryway into the citadel of Mycenae. In common with most of the ancient Greek sites, Mycenae enjoys a very strategic location here at altitude and looking out across the plains of the Argolid. Here in the inner court you can see Grave Circle A, the area of the royal tombs, and once again here you can see a more sweeping vista that gives you an idea of the enormous scale of the place. And now just outside of the main site, this is the magnificent monument of Mycenaean engineering known as the Treasury of Atreus. The main room which we're entering here is some 13 and a half meters high and is composed of 33 rings of these perfectly joined stone blocks. The area of the Argolid contains numerous major sites, and here we're driving past Tirintha, just along the road from Mycenae, and dating to the end of the Mycenaean period, so that most of the structure that you can see here dates back to around 1200 BC. 
as on most occasions we're not actually going to stop to visit Tirintha having had quite an extensive exploration of Mycenae but we're just having a little drive around here so we can see from the external perimeter some of the major features of this site. And now just about five minutes along the road from Tirintha here we arrive in Nafplio and you can see towering above the town of Nafplio the Acronafplia Fortress, the Palamidi, and another of Nafplio's main attractions, this little island fort called the Burzi, lying just off the coast and guarding the approach from the sea, easily visited with one of these small boats which are lining the quayside just outside the main square of the town. Here again you can see the Palamidi up above the town. Very extensive fortifications there. You can get there either by climbing the 999 steps or simply by driving up the road. And here we are now walking up from the quayside towards the main square. You can see very attractive neoclassical buildings here. Nafplio was in fact the first capital of the modern Greek state after the revolution of independence in 1821. And here we are coming into the main square itself. Once again you can see here the architectural style of these buildings that house the shops and restaurants. This is one of the little side streets just behind the square and now time to sit and relax for a little while and enjoy lunch in this restaurant. This is the Komboloi Museum, a shop which sells the traditional Greek worry beads and just up the road from that here we are outside the church which is famous for the bullet hole in the wall marking the spot where the first governor of Greece, Kapodistrias, was assassinated. And here at the base of the fortifications, this is the start of a pleasant little walk, skirting around the main area of the town. And this is a walk of about a mile, so about 15 minutes, with the, the sea on our one hand and the castle above us on the left hand side. There are some coves here accessible amongst the rocks where you can go swimming. And also you can see ahead to the right there, there is a small beach and over on the opposite rock face again further fortifications. And as we come to the end of the coastal path there are the steps leading up the side of the rock face to the main section of the castle. So while some of the group have been climbing up the steps we're driving up to meet them and here we are now just arriving at the entrance to the castle. And here you can see the extensive views down over the plain of the Argolid from inside the castle. And beyond the castle wall, the town of Nafrilio below us, and once again the island fortress, the Burzi. And now it's quite late in the afternoon as we're heading back north towards Corinth. We're not able to get admission to the site at Argos as they're still on their winter opening hours and closing at 5 o'clock. But we can see here part of the ancient site. We saw the, the theatre there a moment ago and now up on the brow of the hill this is Larissa Castle. And here we are at the end of the day approaching home and here to greet us is the familiar landmark of Acro Corinth.